Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm looking at the list of things to do because I think they're going to go down a lot just by what I just did. So I was spending a little bit of time looking like I was writing extra tests. The ones that I put in the end of the last episode where I asked a couple to do's and it wouldn't build. And I'm like, why is this not building? And I noticed in the output, it was saying something about a null reference exception in my generator. I'm like, what? So then I go to the, I think I still know because I've shut down and started up again a lot. I went to the terminal and built it directly and it built just fine. And I'm like, what, what's going on? You know, I, I couldn't figure out what, what the problem was. And finally I was able to, I, I kept type, typing in debugger.break, not debugger.launch. And so I finally did that, got it to launch. And what happened was, is a place that I said was gonna be a little brittle is this one. This was causing a null reference exception because for whatever reason when I was building it, it wasn't actually getting this tab string field and then this would fail and give a null reference exception. So I made it a little less brittle by just saying, if you can't find the field, just return a tab. Best, best guess, best choice. Again, I hope they add on to the indented text writer a way to read the tab string out that would get rid of this and I wouldn't even have to do this. But I'm like, yeah, for now, we'll just do this. This works and then everything worked just fine. So we're good. I don't think it's actually printing out, printing out. I don't think it's generating the code just yet anymore. Where is it? Oh, it is, okay. And we got void and we got that and we got int and we got that. So it's like, eh, okay. I mean, if you have two return types that have the same name, then what are you gonna do? Then you have to like put the whole namespace there. And that would hopefully cover it, you know, if I had to go that far, but I really don't wanna have to force somebody to type all that in. So we're just gonna go with the name for now. So the thing is, I think I committed everything. Yeah, I did. Okay. The thing is, is if I look at all these, like return members that only differ by return type, we just solved that. Um, handle method returns. We've pretty much solved it the way I want to using an option of T we're going to get to maybe in this one, or I don't know. Um, handle indexers, we got to do handle overloads. We just handled. Okay. Handle multiple method signatures. We just handled. So there's like four that are going to go away inadvertently just because of me solving this. Okay. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to do the dance of not only just updating the branches so that main has all the right stuff, but then I'm going to close out all those uh, other things and then I'll come back and we'll decide what we're going to work on for the remainder of this episode. Okay, as you can see, the list has been shrunk dramatically. The one thing I also realized I didn't do is, and I'll have to do this in the next one, I really need to do GitHub actions and have a better build process in place. But this needs to go up to two because that's what the milestone is really for when I eventually release it. Uh, the diagnostics is probably one I want to do now. This is going to be a little boring, but the reason I want to pick this is because I just... Well, let me do this. I'm gonna see types of any property check diagnostics. We want to interface it. Uh, yeah, so we definitely have some other work to do. Check. Yeah, okay, so what I wanna do is this one. I think I'll do the option one next and then the properties and indexers. This one I think is more just, let's see what happens when we generate code. Is that a little bit better from, an, from a user experience? So yeah. This one will probably be a little bit boring, but it needs to be done. We re what we really need to do is have what I've been doing before, which is this, um, what I call the, I don't, I don't remember what I call it. If I come here to repo, no, not there, here. If I come here and I say, what's the, what's, what's a good example? I don't know if I have any good examples. <laughs> it's assuming what I'm doing is a good example. So do I have it? Maybe I don't have any. I know I have it in rocks. It's more just of a code pattern that I want to follow. It'd be fun to go through rocks and now update all the things to be more like 
that raw string little string literal template. Uh, mock information. Yeah, so here we want um, member information. Uh, I don't know what I want to call this. What what I want to do is basically say, here's all the access nodes that you found. Go do something with them. And it in turn will then basically give you, instead of this thing to pass around, more, you know, well, it might. We might just keep that specific dictionary by type symbol, hashtag members, you know, <laughs> members of generate, keep that around. But pretty much pull that into that and let it figure out what it needs to do. And then it will also create diagnostics that we want to do. Okay. So the, the thing is, what do I want to call this? Static cast information. Sure. You know, why not? Why not? Why not? Because I can't think of a better name. Static cast inform. <sighs> of course. Sure. And blah. Blah. Ugh. And we can move an internal seal class. Okay, now, hold on. Okay, I wanted to have the one up from rocks to be kind of a a model because we want to have, for example, that because that's what we want, okay? We also want to then grab from here this unfortunate signature, but you know, we want that. And it can be internal because you know, why not? Members to generate. Okay. So we got those things going for us. And we what we want this to take on construction is what? An immutable array of access nodes. No, that's not what I wanted you to do at all. <laughs> you guessed poorly. So we come up here. We're basically going to, we don't know what these are. We don't, we don't know what, um, what diagnostics we have yet. We don't know what we have for members to generate. We just have this and we want to do all of this in there. So what we want to do is this dot verify by passing in access nodes. It looks good to me. Okay, and then that. Okay. So now what we want to do is here, we want to have our diagnostics is equal to a new list of diagnostics. Oh yeah, we're going to have to do all the diagnostic descriptors, all that nonsense. And so now we'll see that somewhere down below, we're going to say this dot diagnostics is equal to diagnostics to immutable array. And so that will shut it up in terms of being, oh, you're not assigning everything. We'll say var members to generate is equal to a new list of that. And then somewhere down at the bottom, we're going to say is dot members to generate is equal to members. Can we make this an immutable dictionary at this point? We can. And we can say here, that and then this to immutable dictionary. And now you should be quiet because we're assigning everything, right? <sighs> Fine. Go away. 
You just stink. Because immutable dictionary is not a struct, it's a class. But an immutable array is a struct, so you don't get the same thing there. Whatever. Okay, so then we've done that. We're basically going to do this. Okay, so we're basically shifting all that here. And, oh, yeah, we don't have the compilation. Oh, no, we do we get the compilation? Yeah, we, pa we have to pass that in. Okay. Okay. I think that's enough. So now what we can do here, at least to is a var information is equal to new static cast information where we're going to be passing in the access nodes in the compilation. And we can basically take away all of this and now say if information that members to generate is that okay oh yeah you're expecting that it's a which is fine because there and then this one also needs to be a immutable dictionary. And now we should be good. Okay. Sure. So nothing, we didn't really change any behavior. So we should be able to at least run the tests here and say run all the tests and they should still pass. Okay, they all pass, so we're good there. Now what we wanna do though is start actually putting in the, no, why did you go there? You were here, once you remember that you were there? What I wanna do now is say, when I do create generator, yeah. Basically, we want to report each diagnostic. And then, like in some cases, our diagnostics generate mapping. Oh, we, we generate a mapping. Oh, so I'm not really following my own. <laughs> generate mapping does mock information. And it just returns the diagnostics, but I guess mock information won't actually, that's right. Excuse me. Yeah, so if there are any errors, then it doesn't do this, okay? So that's how we can <laughs> determine if we need to do anything. So here, we basically build everything if we have any members. Uh, you know, I guess maybe in some cases, like if you would have passed in as a second parameter an interface that doesn't have any static abstract members, but then there's a second case where you would, you definitely want to flag that. But the second one, you'd still say build. So this one will basically say, okay, here are the, all the things you need to build. Out here is where you would also just report all the diagnostics. So, eh, works for me. I'm kind of a easygoing person. So, what are the things that I want to do here? If if we couldn't find any members, we definitely want to flag it as a warning. Let me look at the things in my document. If a member is not public static and abstract of the static cast, please tell me, God. I'm doing all of this work. I know, and I could stash it and then move. Ugh. 
I just wish I would have remembered to actually make a branch for this. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I can stomach that for now. So, oh well. Anyway, if it's not public, static, and abstract. Well, it, if it's on an interface, it doesn't matter. The static has usage does not provide exactly two gener generic parameters. Well, then we're just not going to do anything with it. If the second generic is not an interface or it's an open generic, it cannot be determined. Or if it's an open generic, it cannot be determined, yeah. If the given member name isn't found on is we don't care about that. So really, this one goes away. This one goes away. That one I think still, if the given member name isn't found on, yeah, because we just say we do for all of them now, we don't care. So I think here though, we wanna have something if, if the given interface does not have any, static abstract members. So that's where we want to have a diagnostic here. So this is giving a where, we could say like two array. We could do any and say if not members any And then say here, else, oh God, that was really butchered, wasn't it? And then we take this, there, okay. So then we do all that. Here's where we basically want to do a diagnostic and say that the current thing, so. Back to rocks, <laughs> rocks. And then I bet you have diagnostics in here. Yes, you do. And so in here you do something like, we could do like SC1. And then the message is there, cannot mock obsolete types, yes. So we can kind of copy this and say, let's put in No, I wanted a I wanted a new folder. And then we want um what we're we gonna call this. What did I just oh my god, data sources. I haven't touched a database in years, <laughs> to be quite honest. I haven't done anything with a database in a long time. Interface has no static abstract members. Sure, except we're going to eventually just take all this, cut you there. This is static cast diagnostics. None of that. None of that. This, what do we have at this point? Symbol. This is a I type symbol. So we can say here, create one. For that, this is a C1. Title, the type, we can say the interface has no static abstract members. And, yep, okay. Static abstract members on interface. We can do the names there. We don't have diagnostic constants. I'll get to that. Now we don't have any help in <sighs> so many things. So many things I don't have. No, now you oh, God. <laughs> this we could do because we copied that. The diagnostic constants We can copy, except you're gonna to wanna to be static cast. And that's fine, that's fine. And then we need a 
a help URL URI builder, and that's do, 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 there. And then we say, no. And this will be static, static cast. So this will be the identifier in the title. Okay. And so here, where did we do this? Okay, you got it, you got it, you got it. So if you come back here to the information, we want to say, um, what do we want to say? What we want to say is diagnostics add interface Grab that, that. So do you don't know what this is, but you do now. And this is cast to parameter symbol, right? Because that's the thing we're pulling out. Okay. So if we'll say if not gas parameter type or you can just say it does not equal <laughs> else okay and so in this case we'll say generic parameter is not interface Generic parameter is not interface, except this should be diagnostic, right? This should be diagnostic, gnostic. Okay. And we're gonna basically just, no, you can be internal. Internal. We'll grab all that. We'll make you static. That, 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 not that. Oh my God. That, that. Yeah, you don't know. You can't figure those out. That's funny. So this is within the scope of this document. Replace those, okay? So this is going to be to the generic parameter type is not an interface. Generic parameter type. Good as anything else. And so we do pass in the type symbol. Okay. So then in this case, and in this case, we take these off. And then here we would say another diagnostic to say generic parameters, not interface. Okay. So where are my notes again? It's not an interface, or if it's open generic, it cannot be determined if it's going to the gate of an interface is not any static. So we've got the two there, except. We still have to figure out, that might be in the, in the next episode. We still have to see if there is a way to figure out if you have an open generic, and this, this is gonna be fun to, uh, yeah, this, this will be some exploration. If you have an open generic parameter, has it been constrained to an interface type? Because if it has, then we can assume it's gonna be at least of that type and we will just then grab, we will just say that is the symbol that we're going to be looking for. Okay. So this, yeah, I, th I think that's what I'm going to do in the next one is say, how can we make a determination about an open generic? Is it of an interface type? For now, let's just quickly do the tests on here and say run the tests 
uh, just those tests, that'll be good enough. We're not going to close out all the diagnostics because there would be a diagnostic to say, or like we would change the the the, the this to, this diagnostic to say is not an interface or is not constrained to be of an interface type, something like that. Good enough for now, so I'll commit this. Unfortunately, I don't have a branch because I was a dummy, but we'll at least tag it so that it's with this. Added to diagnostics. There we go. Okay, so then in the next episode, what I'll do is we'll start to dig into that thing. And then after that, we're going to do, I believe, the we'll do the diagnostics and then we're going to just do this in order. Options, properties and indexers will kind of go hand in hand. So that'll be the next thing. But option T will be next. And I'm probably going to be grabbing from, I'll make sure I try to get a link to this, to this book. This is called Functional Programming in C, in C Sharp. And it, it talks about some of these things. And there's libraries that you can use to, to, to have these option things. I'm probably just going to kind of take what's in the book, give credit where credit is due, but produce something that's fairly simplistic and just have that around for what I need to do. So in any event, thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode. Thank you.